but this, this chart by itself is, is not sufficient. So this is an example, again, of, of metrics without insight. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't use this chart, but I'm saying that this chart by itself is not going to be sufficient to answer that are we ready to ship question, yet we see a large number of clients that do indeed use a chart just like this in an attempt to, uh, to answer that. Okay, so here's another uh, surprise. Even smart people jump to conclusions. And this is a quote from H.L. Mencken here, one of my favorites. For every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. And we see, we, we see that during assessments. There is a desire to have a simple, obvious explanation of why something happened or how a problem can be made to go away. Um, and this ties back to the previous surprise that I was talking about, the, the lack of, of uh, sufficient data, if you will, that, that, that having, having lots of metrics but not necessarily the right metrics. And um, the way that this manifests itself during an assessment, how we see this happening, is that we'll hear a hypothesis put forward uh, during an interview. Somebody will say, we have problem X, and it's because of Y. Uh, we have, uh, it takes too long for the testers to find the important bugs, and that's because they don't understand our customers and how they use the product. That's an example of that hypothesis of problem, reason, or in this case, problem, scapegoat. Now, that, that could be true. It could be true that the reason that your your bugs are being found late in the game is because the testers don't really understand the uh, product and they're learning the product as they're testing it, and it's only once they've achieved a certain degree of sophistication that they start finding important bugs. And, and depending on the test strategies that you find, that might actually exacerbate that very problem. Um, but without some sort of careful um, analysis, uh, objective proof of uh, that hypothesis. Should we, should we accept it? Should we act on it? Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, we, we have seen people ready to act on um, these conclusions that they've reached that, that, that sound very reasonable, but unfortunately are, are wrong, which of course is the most dangerous kind of wrong. And, um, they're ready to go forward and make changes based on this conclusion that, that, that they've jumped to um, when the data is actually not there to support it. And, and as I said, that's the, the, the thing that's wrong but, but sounds reasonable is the, the most dangerous kind of wrong. Uh, here's an example. Um, I'll come back to that most dangerous kind of wrong point in a minute. Um, doing an assessment for a client a few years ago. And I want to I want to mention something here that perhaps I should have mentioned at the outset, but it's uh, you know, I, I want to make sure that it's clear. I am not talking about dumb people here. Uh, I'm talking about very very smart people. Uh, these these um, surprising findings are not surprising because I'm surprised that people could make such mistakes. It's, I think this is we're, we're talking about things that are elemental in human nature. The, the desire to have a simple explanation that makes a complex problem uh, go away, or at least a complex problem appear simple and its solution simple, is something that is you know very attractive to people. And and here's here's a case study of that. We had a client a few years ago. We're going through the assessment process. And people are saying, you know, it seems like there are a lot of rejected bug reports. Now, by rejected bug reports, I mean the bug report ultimately turns out to be a non-issue. In other words, the behavior of the product is correct. So they, the people are saying, well, it seems to be a large number of rejected bug reports. And that, that part was right. We looked at the percentage of bug reports that were rejected. And in their, their parlance, they called that close, which is a little unusual from a terminological point of view, because closed often means closed with a fix rather than, than rejected or canceled. But in this case, they call those closed, uh, closed as non-issues. 
And, and indeed, there was a, a fairly high percentage, I think it was around 15% or so overall, uh, maybe a little bit higher than that, 15 20%. And usually we would like to see that when we look at metrics and organization. We like to see that number around 5%. Once it gets above 5%, that's when we start to say, hmm, what's going on here? Well, when people were saying, you know, the, the rejected bug report rate seems to be pretty high. Um, they, the, they immediately would follow that up with, at least most of them would immediately follow it up with this comment of the reason that happens is because the testers don't have enough experience with the use of the product. Now this is an industrial control system and it was used in, in various kinds of factories and refineries and pharmaceutical plants and things like that. So it's, it's industrial control software. It's pretty complicated stuff and it's obviously quite mission critical and the uh, use of it and the, and the defects that it could experience is quite subtle. So this is very reasonable to say, you know, if the testers don't have enough real-world experience working in plants and factories and refineries and so forth with products like ours, they're not going to be able to understand proper use of the product and therefore they're going to follow off spurious bug reports. It's a totally reasonable uh, hypothesis. And it would have been very easy for me to have come forward with a report that said, yeah, you know, you guys, you need to get rid of some of your less experienced testers, the ones that have less, uh, you know, time in, in factories and plants and so forth, and, and really uh, try, to, try to focus on hiring people with more experience. But before jumping to that conclusion, I said, okay, this is a testable hypothesis. I asked the test manager to give me the data for the bug reports, the percentage of bugs that had been rejected, broken down person by person. I told them, I don't need to know the name of the person, but I do want you to tell me how many years of actual plant experience, real world experience, you think that person has. So just give me a spreadsheet that contains a co two columns of numbers side by side. Percentage of rejected bug reports, number of years of actual experience using products like this in plants and refineries and so forth. I run a scatter plot. The scatter plot you see on this screen is what uh, came up from that. And um, for those of you who um, you know remember your statistics, probably better than I do, uh, when you look at that R squared value you see over at the uh, right side on the middle of the screen, and R squared is 0 0.0166, and that basically means that there is no statistical correlation. And even if you don't remember your um, your statistics. I mean, you can you can clearly see that there really does not seem to be any sort of of connection. I mean, yes, you have people who have uh, what would appear to be maybe a limited amount of experience, less than five years, um, filing a large number of bug reports that get rejected. But but there were people with a lot more than five years experience, and in some cases even more than 20 years experience, filing a large number of bug reports that get rejected, well over five percent. In fact, everybody's, almost everybody's over 5%, regardless of their number of years of experience. So statistically, this assertion that the reason that bug reports get filed that shouldn't have been, quote unquote, shouldn't have been filed, and then that's, that's a separate assertion too. The reason the bug reports get filed that shouldn't get filed is because people don't have enough experience, the testers don't have enough experience, turns out to not be supported by the data. Now, if I hadn't done this test and I had just gone forward with this recommendation to uh, lay off or fire the testers or reassign the testers who had uh, less than five years or less than ten years experience or whatever, uh, that, that suggestion might very well have carried the day and it would have been completely and totally unjust for that to have been done to those people because statistically there is no connection there. There is no statistical correlation here. and so. You, know, you really have to be careful about testing these things, testing, testing out these sort of um, assertions that, that sound reasonable uh, because, as I say, that's, uh, the thing that sounds reasonable and is wrong is the most dangerous kind of wrong, and people will do things that sound reasonable even if they're wrong. Uh, if something's wrong and it sounds stupid, then nobody's going to do it anyway because 